this is, this is, this is. Welcome to it, everybody. Welcome to it. Brand new episode for you, 457. We are into the last week of April. That's right, the last week of April. We're heading into May. April showers bring May flowers. Everybody knows that. If you didn't, well, you're welcome. Congratulations. So, uh, you know, every, everywhere I turn, I see AI this, AI that, chat GPT 3, 4, 4.5, everything. So, you know, and now we're, tr we're starting to see, you know, oh, they're just regurgitating things they scraped off the internet. So some of that information you're getting from chat, you know, open AI stuff is not going to be correct. It's going to be wrong. Just like everything else online, everything else in the world. Oh, well, if it was on TV, it must be true. If it was online, it must be true. Not so, not so. If it was in open AI, it must be true because AI obviously knows more than me, a human. Not true, everybody, not true. I'm not anti-AI, by the way. I think it definitely can be used responsibly. Um, but there was a <laughs> there was a clip recently about, uh, it was uh, Elon Musk talking about the guy from Google um, and their friends and their billionaire kind of buddies. And they kind of fell out of being friends because Elon was saying that he thought, hey, maybe we should be responsible and just be a little a little careful when it comes to AI. And uh, the Google guy was like, no, I want, I want to create an AI God. I want there to be an AI God. Now, I'm not saying I agree with Elon Musk either, because maybe he's just saying those kinds of things to get a leg up in his business, you know, because I think he does a lot of posturing online, does a lot of posturing in the world to the press, to the media. Um, anybody in that kind of position probably does. Um, any big companies, they do posturing, posturing. So... Wow, take it with a grain of salt, everybody. Every, you gotta take everything with a grain of salt because uh, you just never know what's really, really going on out there, right? Depressing, not fun. Um, you know what really is going on out there? Punk rock music. I'm seeing a lot of great shows coming up, a lot of great things. We have, this summer, we have July 1st, Festivois. MXPX is headlining, it's a Saturday night. It's gonna be off the hook all the way out in Three Rivers, Quebec. So if you're out in French Canada, it's the punk rock cap capital of the world, not just Canada, of the world. They love their pop punk, they love their punk rock, they love their skate punk, anything. They love their metal, they love their hardcore, all of that. So we're gonna be there J July 1st. Um, September 22nd, Furnace Fest. Ah, oh, yes, gonna be great. If you haven't already got tickets, make sure you go get those. Uh, MXPX, we have our tickets. I'll just put it that way. Friday night, we'll see at Furnace Fest, February 22nd. Um, full headlining set. It's going to be one for the history books. I think I think at that point, I mean, we might as well just call it a day, you know, because that's probably going to be one of the coolest shows we've played. Um, but if we make it past Furnace Fest, we will be at When We Were Young Fest, um, October 21st, 22nd. And... That's two nights, two days, not nights. It's two days and nights in Las Vegas, Nevada. Going to be great. Um, MXPX.com. We have some merch up there. We have some, some discounted items every now and again. So uh, please check that out. And thank you for your orders. We appreciate it. We're a mom and pop. My mom's still running the store, still going. It's been, it's been good. It's been great. Um, shout out to Bob McKnight producing this podcast and if you want to be on the podcast, meaning if you want to call in, leave me a voicemail, ask me a question, get me started on a topic. Maybe you want to talk more about this AI stuff. Maybe you want to talk more about ancient civilizations. I would love it. Anything like that. Call me up. The number is 360-830-6660. All right. Let's get to our first voicemail. Hey, Mike, this is Jordan from West Virginia, uh, longtime fan. I just had a real quick thought. I uh, just wanted to know kind of what you thought of the horror punk genre in general, first of all. Uh, second of all, a band in particular uh, called Blitzkid. Their vocal harmonies to me are just out of this world. You know, they're kind of on a hiatus, I think, these days, but... When they were together, uh, some of their vocal harmonies and bass lines and things like that, eerily reminiscent of MXPX sometimes, I would say. 
I uh, just really wanted to know what you thought of them, if you knew about them. If not, check them out. Uh, you know, also, you can't talk about horror punk without talking about the Misfits. Uh, don't think I've ever heard you talk about them, and they're an extremely influential band. So, I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on that. All right, thanks. Yeah, thanks for calling in, Jordan. I uh, hope West Virginia's treating you well. Always had a good time out there. People are so nice in West Virginia. Um, horror punk. Yeah, I love it. You know, I'm into rockabilly, have been for a long time. I got into 50s, like, doo-wop kind of style and, like, pushing that into, like, the punk rock, like, category. Um, so, yeah, I, I you know, as far as, like, did I get into the actual horror punk scene, eh, not as much. Like, I love the, uh, sorry, I, I love the Misfits. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Blitz Kid, never heard never heard them um but the name immediately sounded familiar so i'm sure i think I've, I've i've heard you know seen their name around or something like that but this is a blitz kid yeah okay hard driving rock and roll punk rock cool 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 yeah that's blitz kid um no, you know, I'll have to check out some more of their stuff. Um, it looks like they have a co yeah, they have a bunch of albums from 1999 on. Maybe they have some stuff earlier than that. Who knows? You never know with, you know, the invent of streaming and, and all that. Some things didn't make it on. But um, but as far as Misfits go, you know, I, I remember Misfits, you know, the first song I ever knew about that existed, I knew kind of because of Yuri. Yuri and Tom Wisniewski, um, my bandmates, <laughs> you know, the, those guys were friends with a subset of dudes from Ridgetop that, uh, n knew the misfits. And so they were covering uh, a song called skulls. And so they played me skulls. Da -da 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 -da. So, uh, that's the first song I ever heard. I was like, okay, that's cool. I like that. You know, I want your skull. I need your skull. Um, 20 eyes great song 20 eyes in my head um and of course last caress i got something to say do, do, I, you know all that stuff so um you know it's funny because i got into the misfits uh, probably like right after i got in, into the ramones and the ramones are another one of those just seminal punk obviously punk bands um they they're the godfathers the grandfathers of it all um as far as the american style punk rock but the misfits were were kind of in there too you know if you've if anybody's read get in the van there's two different parts there's the u.s part and then there's a the european part but um henry rollins talks about touring with black flag and about about how he's in europe he he's he was a huge misfits fan and he's sleeping in in the whatever backstage room band room and he hears skulls and they're playing the song and he's like what that sounds like the misfits and he like makes his way out to the to the venue or to the hall you know music hall and it's the misfits sound checking so stories like that i was just always like okay they're they're real people these people are real just like i'm a real person so yeah i got a lot of good memories of misfits you know i i i you know went and watched i never saw them with glenn danzig but i saw them after after that um i think i saw them play with guar um they opened for guar it was like the guar misfits tour but it was not with glenn danzig like glenn's back now so if you see seen them in the last year or two um you would have seen them with glenn the original singer wow crazy glenn Dan anybody that doesn't know about glenn danzig He's kind of, he's a character in, in punk rock and in just metal in general, rock, you know, metal. Uh, most people just loathe him. I mean, even though they love his band, they just don't like the guy because he's just continually a jerk to all his bandmates. He's a jerk to people around him. He's, he's loathsome, let's just say. But I've never personally met him, so I don't know if, if that's true. I mean, I've seen videos of him interacting with people, and yeah, he seems like a jerk, but... Yeah. So anyway, that's, you know, my mis you know, Misfits, uh, classic, classic rock and roll punk rock band that 
definitely is the the forefathers of the horror punk scene for sure. But uh, thanks for thanks for calling in, Jordan. Hey, Mike, uh, Rob from Naperville calling uh, again. Uh, I called a couple months ago. I uh, asked you up the bass between the bass. Uh, just a quick update. I ended up going with the Fender Jazz bass just because the percussion bass what? had a little bit of a thicker neck, and I got oh. a, what you call smaller hands. So it makes it a little easier for me. <laughs> uh, that's the last call. Uh, I was just curious. Well, uh, what was your, what was your favorite album that you guys ever recorded? I'm not talking like musically or lyrically, because you know every artist has their newest one. But yeah. I'm referring to like you know the producer you work with. Obviously, you got to work with the great Jeremy Finn before. You know, maybe it was watching someone back in the day work with you know cut tape. First time working with Pro Tools, or maybe it was, you know, working in the studio. There was a band or artist working in the same studio as you guys you never met, and you guys hung out, maybe worked together, something like that, or, you know, anything along those lines. So I'd just be curious, you know, what was your favorite album to record? Uh, that's all I got. Uh, take care. Come for you guys to tour again, and uh, hopefully see you guys at the end of Chicago sometime soon. All right, take care. That's a great question, Rob. That's a great question. Well, how do I hang so? The, uh, the I, I thought you were like choosing. I forgot about the you called before asking what what I would prefer between a Fender jazz bass and a P bass, and I had forgotten that you were just talking about that and not between like say a, a jazz bass and a Stingray, which is an Ernie Ball, which I of course prefer Ernie Balls. But yeah, between the the Fender P bass and the Fender jazz bass, you put, chose the jazz. It de definitely has a thinner neck. So if that's what you prefer, you're not going to go wrong with that. That's great. So congratulations on your new bass. Um, favorite album we've recorded. Man, it's so hard to pick a favorite. You know, it's like picking your own, picking a favorite record. Now, Okay, so you don't want songs. You don't want, you know, any of that because, of course, it is our, our newest stuff. It's my favorite. But um, if I had to choose, I would say there's so many good moments. You know, our first album, Poconaccia, was our first recording experience. Um, we got to hang out with with um, each other in a recording experience, you know, for the first time. Um, and then, of course, Teenage Politics was sort of like, again, a new first recording experience with Tom as our guitar player. So Andy was our guitar player, Andy Husted, then Tom. So those were both recorded at Avast Studios in, in Seattle, Washington in the U district, um, Wallingford, Seattle area. And, um, the, uh, sorry, I'm throwing my phone on the floor so it doesn't keep bothering me, <laughs> but I wouldn't say those are, those are our favorite. That's not my favorite. Uh, moving on, going into life in general. That was a great session. West beach recorders, Hollywood, California with Steve Kravak. Um, we got to meet the Millen Collin boys at that point. We got to meet, um, Mr. Brett, you know, Brett Gurowitz from Bad Religion, Epitaph Records, you know, it's his, it was his studio at the time. Um, got to try Thai food and Mediterranean food really for the first time, life in general. But alas, that is not my favorite. I was sick for at least half of that session, just like dying, trying to get well, sleeping on the couch. Um, The ever passing moment, not my favorite recording session. We had so many great experiences, so many first time experiences. We really learned uh, how to drink alcohol on that 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 album. Um, we had just turned twenty one before that album started recording, and um, it was uh, it was a different kind of album. I'll tell you that because of that. But uh, uh, we got to continue our love for Thai food. Up, we recorded that up in Seattle, Washington, with Steve Kravak again but this time at Robert Lang Studios. Um, so many good times, but we just busted our asses so much to make that record. Um, we worked really hard on it. So moving forward, I'd say that was not our favorite. So slowly going the way of Buffalo, and it's not our favorite session. Um, the ever passing moment. Here we are back in Hollywood, California. Um, but before we get to Hollywood, we record drums in Seattle. Jerry Finn came up. He brought a uh, he brought his engineer at the time, Sean O'Dwyer, and we recorded where we recorded Buffalo. 
Robert Lang Studios, Shoreline, California, or Shoreline, Seattle area. Uh, and man, that was a wild little session. We met Chip, the mouth breather, all these things. Um, so many funny little little stories from that session, that album. But that was just drums. And then we went, packed up, went back down to Hollywood, California, and Conway Studios on off Santa Monica Boulevard. That's um, a beautiful studio. That's where we met the Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl and, and company. That's where we, uh, I wouldn't say we met. Um, well, yeah, 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 yeah. We met um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Young. We met... We met Neil Young more so. Um, I wouldn't say he would even know who we are, especially at this point, let's face it. But um, we, we didn't really so much meet Crosby, Stills, or Nash. Those guys were there, but they were mixing and kind of finishing up on things, uh, their newest album, and they did not appreciate how loud we were coming out of our, our studio because there was Studio A, Studio B, Studio C, and uh, one was a pretty much just a mix room you can do vocals and things like that and the, the middle one was a a big drum room and then there was a smaller c room so it, it was a cool place that had these winding walkways through tropical planted villages and it's just it was just very hollywood but uh we each had our own little lounges we'd come out and had a a, a public shared shared space where we'd make coffee and you know get our food and play foosball all that so that that was probably i'm gonna say that was my favorite session you know because we had so many good times we we would go to parties up at jerry finn's house he lived up in the hollywood hills right above the hard uh right above house of blues and so he would just take us down to the the sky bar and he knew everybody that worked there so we could just get into the sky bar anytime whatever like things like that like um we would we had friends that worked at the studio that we'd go out and go to dinner with them and and just had more experiences than just recording which um we've done both you know it, I, I wouldn't say one is better than the other but but man i think because of uh because of that experience the song kings of hollywood came about on the next record on, on before everything and after you're like no well it's somebody's favorite song but uh, we wrote that song kind of based on just like feeling like the kings of Hollywood and, and cruising around. But um, I'm going to have to say the ever passing moment was was really I mean, there's so many good memories. Even the next record on uh, before everything and after we recorded with uh, Dave Jordan at uh, El Dorado Studios in North Hollywood. And the place was an awesome studio. It was really cool, really well put together, uh, much simpler than um, than the Conway Studios. But uh, we loved it, and it was a great little location where we stayed kind of close by, and and we just showed up every day and and, and made a record, but also had a lot of free time because Dave wasn't uh, wasn't a full day kind of worker guy, so we would have a lot of free time, and so that was actually pretty fun too. But but I would say I'm still going with the ever passing moment as the the funnest, my favorite recording session. Now since I've kind of gone through a lot of them I, I want to kind of finish out a couple um secret weapon we recorded that uh we recorded the drums and the bass at london bridge in seattle washington great studio it's up north seattle and uh that that console in that room just sounds amazing it's an it's an old api like an ancient api so is robert lang as well uh but a different one and then no 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 uh, the Robert Lang is an API, and uh, London Bridge is actually uh, a Neve, an old Neve, like very old. So old that they didn't have panning knobs. It was literally like panning faders. You'd fan, fade one, the other, that kind of thing. So uh, very cool spot. And then we recorded the rest in at the compound in Seattle, where uh, it's a, a studio that Tooth & Nail Records owned. And so Steve... Uh, sorry, recorded the compound uh, with Aaron Sprinkle. He produced, and that was a cool session. But it wasn't cr it wasn't nearly as crazy as, as our LA sessions. But um, and then uh, what was after that? Uh, Plans within plans, which I recorded here upstairs, and that was awesome. But that was a very strange record. Maybe we'll talk more about it at some point. But it was like a 
It's almost like a bedroom album, except for the guys were all here, but I just don't re remember anything. We didn't document much. And so it's hard to remember. It's like, I don't have pictures from that session. I don't have like, you know, it's such a weird time in our lives, I feel like. And I think I, I was, um, I was getting into tumble down at the time, but, um, but moving on from Plans Within Plans and we come to Self-Titled, also recorded upstairs. Casey Bates uh, produced and mixed the record and we had a blast. It was like old times. It felt like we were anywhere we've always been recording. Um, and it feels good to, to be able to do it in your own spot too, you know, in your own space. So, um, so many great memories from that session. But, but of course we were already grown up by that, that time. So I didn't learn to drink uh, anymore on this new record. And then of course, you know, we have our new record. I'll talk about that maybe in the future because uh, we're still, of course, putting things together and working on that. But what a great little topic. I appreciate that, Rob. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for your great, great question. Let's move on. Next question. Hey, Mike, it's uh, Shaner here from Toronto, Canada. Uh, I just wanted to say a uh, long-time fan of MXPX. Started listening in around 97, 98 or so. Uh, I'm new to the podcast thing. Uh, my buddy and I just started a podcast myself. Um, punk Rock, uh, Sh the Shaner and Johnny's Punk Rock Dadcast. Uh, we've been into uh, Dads and Punk Rock combined. Uh, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's actually a guy out in Edmonton in Canada here uh, who does a really good one too uh, he's had uh, Jim from uh, Pennywise on his three girls uh, I can't believe how old they are to be honest uh, same with uh, Eric Melvin no effects uh, uh, his kids um, uh, twin girls five years old as well um, anyway I, wa I was really interested to hear how uh, how you went through uh Having having your kids and and did Holly really step in and help out to uh, allow you to manage the band stuff or did did your band kind of take a bit of a hiatus or did you take any time off or or you know did you push through it what was that like what's it like now I know your kids are are kind of playing guitar a bit I see a bit of that. Uh, how did it all work out? I'm interested to hear your 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 dad's stories. I'd love to hear that. Thanks, Mike. Still listening to you guys. Love you guys. Take care. Shaner, dude, great question. Uh, congrats on the punk rock dad cast. Um, sounds fun. Yeah, you know what you 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 pretty much kind of like outlined it for me. Um, we of course, you know, being new parents ten years ago. We tried, you know, my wife was working, Holly. She was working at the time um, when she had her kid. And so, she, of course, she took leave. And, and I took some time, definitely took some time uh, right at the beginning there. But she started working again like six months later or less than six months later. And I was like for a couple hours a day at least, like half the day, I was hanging out with the kid. And... Um, going crazy a little bit because I was like, I got to do some stuff at some point, but, and then Holly would come home I'd, and I'd go to work and I'd go, go write some songs, do whatever it is I do in a band. You know, what do you do? I don't know. But, um, that was, that was like the first year. And after that, Holly quit her job and just took care of the, the kids full time. We didn't have another kid until after that, obviously, but, um, I'll, I'll be honest. Holly's the champ here. She's the boss. I am the worker bee. I'll help out, but she is almost like the boss and the worker bee. And I'm just like, uh, but, uh, <laughs> I do my best and, and the kids love me. So I'm doing something right. But, uh, um, it's all her, it's all her. But, um, as far as, yeah, uh, going further into it, I tried to balance as much as I could. Definitely didn't do as much. I mean, I'll be honest, if I didn't have kids, there would probably be more MXPX stuff, more tumble down, whatever. There would be more something, right? But at the same time, you kind of, you need to live life. Um, you need to live life in order to like really 
have a perspective to give to people. Me being in a band, I started out, I was a kid, I was a teenager, learning, learning about life and society and about the things that break your heart and people and relationships and authority and, uh, uh, you know, all of these things and opposing that authority. Now it's a different game. I'm, I'm an adult. I've, I've gone through a lot of these experiences. Now I have to like kind of turn it around and have perspective and, and try to have, try to say something worth saying. Um, and I feel like being, being a parent gives you that for sure. It can. Um, but, but you know, moms and dads are all different people too. You know, we have some things that definitely are, are through ways. They're like chords that run through all of our lives. And, you know, as far as being a punk rock dad, you know, that chord is probably just the fact that we love music and we're trying to do what's best for our kids. We're trying to do what's best for the community, stick together. And, uh, and I think I, I love it. You know, I just, I think the main thing I've gained is, is realizing that we have a very short amount of time out there and don't waste, don't waste it. Cause your kids are going to grow up so fast. So, I really balance my time between doing music stuff and being away from the family and being with the family. Um, and sometimes it can't be, it can't be helped. Like right now I'm not with the family. They're gone uh, or I'm gone, which, whatever way you look at it. Um, but you know, that just makes it that much better. It's like, you have to make that time away count that much more. And, and I think just understanding that is, is really the game for me. Um, thanks for the call, Shane. Uh, Shane Er. We love Canada. Can't wait to be back. Um, let's do one more. One more. Here we go. In fact, I think this is you again. Hey, Mike. Shannon here from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I just heard a message or a, a podcast about uh, whether you listen to the audio or the video. Uh, to be honest, I didn't know there was video. I've only been listening to audio. But um, I will check out the video. Uh, that's just my feedback. Thanks so much for these podcasts. I run uh, the Johnny and Shaner Punk Rock Dadcast. Uh, you can find us at punkrockdadcast.com. Uh, it's just a show about uh, dads and <laughs> punk rock. Yep. Thanks so much. Love your love your show. Cheers. That's a double feature right there for you, Shaner. Um, everybody go check out the Punk Rock Dadcast. It's the Johnny and Shaner Punk Rock Dadcast. Uh, I personally haven't checked it out yet. But, uh, hey, I appreciate your call. So if you're going to take your time to call, I'll take my time to tell people about your podcast. Um, you know, it's funny, like the video thing. I do video. I know it's not super entertaining, um, the the quality of, of, of uh, video production that I do for this podcast. It varies. Sometimes I'm using a little webcam, sometimes using a real cam, but um, overall it's just me like talking in front of the camp. And then if I'm with a guest, then it's the split screen with the guest. I don't know, it, like I've done varying degrees of production quality. It doesn't change the, the amount of people that watch the show at all. Um, I don't have necessarily a very popular YouTube channel Sure, I'd love more people to check it out, but let's face it. Is there really a reason to? Unless, you don't, unless you're listening to the podcast or a huge fan of MXPX or myself. Um, you know, that's one of the last things that I'm, I feel like I should be pushing is like, come listen, watch my YouTube channel. Like, dude, I'm not a little kid. I'm just, I'm doing my thing. If you like it, check it out. If not, hey, I love you anyway. Do your thing. But, uh, but. Shaner, I appreciate you, man. You, uh, you've shown some dedication to this podcast, calling in a couple of times. I think we'll get you in on, on the next episode. We'll see. Um, all right, you guys. AI, that's another thing. Like, eventually, we'll probably just ask AI to, to do the editing for my podcast, and they'll, like, make it all flashy. Maybe they'll, they'll whenever. I think, honestly, what all I really would need to do is spend another three, three to four hours a week fixing up my podcast clips, adding, adding like whatever I'm talking to, adding some video accoutrement to, to what I'm saying so that it's like entertaining. So if I'm talking about AI, it's showing like the G chat GPT stuff and like, you know, little news article, little video stuff, like reels. But 
that's the thing is like, <sighs> there's a lot of those little ideas I can think of that'll make, okay, that would take another three to four hours a week and I could really, really work up my game and that and that and that. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Is it worth it to do that? What, what kinds of things do you struggle with when it comes to your time versus, you know, free time versus work time versus doing something creative for yourself? Um, you know, would it be for you or would it be for me if I made the podcast video better? Probably for me because I'll feel better about myself that I'm putting out better quality. But also it would be for anybody watching because it would technically be better quality. I just don't know if you guys care that much about it. Uh, most people listen to audio on the podcast on their various podcast platforms. I don't know where. I listen to podcasts on Apple, on Spotify, on um what, what else there's a couple others that i listen to um what was it uh geez of course oh overcast overcast you know so I, I you know you know what's funny is because i don't like to skip around i like to have a podcast that i'm listening to for a while and i'll have that on spotify and then i'll have um and i'll listen to music on like Apple Music or I'll listen on Spotify too, but, uh, and then I'll listen to Apple podcasts on, on certain ones, like more newsy stuff. I'll listen on Apple and I'll have that stuff or sports podcasts. I'll listen on Apple and I'll have that paused. Um, and then overcast is like almost like the outcast type podcast, the stuff that's like off the beaten path that I'm like not really listening to very often, but I just find random episodes of things. I'll keep that on a separate platform as well. And so I have all these little platforms of podcasts, this podcast, this podcast. So depending on what my mood is, I can do that. Now, I'd love to hear your guys' tactics on how you go about some like everyday kind of things like that. That would, I would love that. You can call in and tell me, you can write me on the uh, Mike Herrera Facebook group. That's where I'll take submissions for Music Monday if you're in a band. Chances are, if you're if it's your band, I'm more likely to pick it. If you're if it's your friend's band, I'm less likely to pick it because just there's there's going to be too many. But you know, if if I don't have somebody and you your friend's band's cool, then maybe I'll put them up. But just so you know, if I don't pick your the band you want me, it's probably because well, I'm picking somebody else that's like literally here's my band, check it out. Um, but we we're trying to do new music Mondays now and again, um, no rhyme or reason. Just uh, I think based on when people send in things and, and convenience for me. That's it. 360-830-6660. Um, Call in, leave a voicemail. Of course, uh, follow us on all those platforms like you say you do. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys next week, all right? Before we go, before we peace out, Bob McKnight. Go check out the Bob and Katie podcast. Love what he does. He produces this podcast, so uh, I appreciate you, buddy. All right. Now you can go. Bye.